Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity to speak to your people and to share truth and expose darkness as your light shines upon the audience. Hey, everyone. Can you hear me okay? As a way to let me know if you can hear me okay, please just do me a favor in the chat box and let me know if you ever fell for the deception of the twin flame gospel or if this is a brand new topic to you. And happy Thanksgiving. Someone wrote it in the chat. Yes, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Let me uh, adjust myself here. It's cozy girl stream night, as you can see by my attire. And I'm going to do my darndest here to try and make this screen bigger, the chat screen bigger, because I... I was going to say I don't have great eyesight, but I will not speak that over myself. Thank you, Jesus, that you have restored my vision. Um, but actually, like, how do I make this screen larger? Zoom. Larger. All right, here we are. Wonderful. Yes. Okay. Um, wonderful. So for those of us that are currently watching please do me a favor and give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already the amount of people who have liked the video do not match the amount of people watching we're at about 50 percent with the like so let's change that give the video a like if you are able to share it on instagram go ahead and do so just post the link live to your story and tag me and be sure to take some video clips, pictures of the stream, screenshots to post later on Instagram and tag me in the story so that I see it and can thank you for being here. Um, before we get into it, I want to just encourage y'all, if you haven't already, to subscribe to Heaven and Healing Podcast. We do these live streams weekly for anyone that is new. Is there anyone new in the chat, by the way? And please... Um, after this episode, please consider partnering with the ministry. Heaven and Healing is entirely crowdfunded. All of the streams, all of the content will always be free. But if you're really fed from this stream, if the Lord puts it on your heart to just kind of be generous um, and steward to the ministry, then please do consider becoming a monthly partner. There are different ways to financially partner with me in the pinned comment in the chat. There will also be in the description of the episode itself. Um, so yeah, let's talk about twin flames. I'm about 10 minutes late to the stream. So <laughs> why don't we just get into it? Right. I have been kind of, um, commissioned by all of you in my DMS to expose the twin flame deception. I call it the twin flame gospel. You're going to hear me refer to it that way a lot. Um, because there's this popular Netflix documentary out right now called Escaping Twin Flames. Y'all were telling me to go watch it. A dear friend of mine, Nastasia, encouraged me to watch it as well. She was really curious on my take as having been someone that came from New Age that Jesus Christ saved me from and am now walking as his disciple in his light. And obviously, praise the Lord, have been set free of all of that demonic bondage. So, <laughs> um... That being said, let's get into it, right? Some things that we're going to talk about in this video, I have a very, very bare bones outline, just going to kind of let Holy Spirit lead as he does. Going to talk about that Netflix documentary just a little bit for those that have seen it and those that have not seen it. I'll talk about what is a twin flame. I will share my twin flame testimony. You know, I always like to share sort of the context of the actual, you know, experience of where I'm coming from as being an ex New Ager for nearly a decade, just sort of as a quote unquote accolade for how I know to speak to these sorts of topics, right? And then, of course, deeper into Twin Flames. What is it? What does it mean? And most importantly, we will finish off with what the Bible says, how this whole twin flame gospel is indeed a demonic deception. Let me know y'all can hear me okay in the chat. And we will close out with what God's biblical design for man and woman is, why that is so important for the devil to steal, kill, and destroy, which is where we have twin flames to begin with. 
And um, at the end, we will always close with a prayer and uh, hang out in the live chat for a Q&A for about 15, 20 minutes. I have a surprise for you all at the end. So uh, stick around for the chat, stick around after the prayer. People always dip out after or before the prayer. The prayer is the most important part of the stream. <laughs> so stick around. Um, as I move into this episode, my prayer is that people that have watched the documentary that are kind of hungry for more information on Twin Flames um, would, would find this, would find this, uh, this stream as what I'm calling sort of the fourth episode to that documentary. Because if you don't know already, it was a three-part series on Netflix and it was kind of just left with having no resolution as to exactly what even what 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 even is a twin flame is is it is it a belief that is actually viable and of course it didn't offer where the true freedom lies you know all these people spoiler alert sorry there will be spoilers for the documentary um they get free i'm using air quotes if you're listening on the replay they get free from the cult but they never get freedom and i will elaborate on that so i pray that people that are not saved that are maybe stuck in this demonic deception of the twin flame gospel would see this and that they would indeed be set free and recognize that jesus is the one that they're looking for not their twin flame and so if that's you watching right now and you're like oh great a christian please have an open mind and just hear this out in Jesus name, I pray that it would plant a seed of faith, if nothing else. So let me know in the chat if you have seen this documentary on Netflix called Escaping Twin Flames. Like I said, I had many people that were pursuing me in my DMs on Instagram, encouraging me to watch it. They were curious of the takeaway. So here I am with the takeaway. Um, now... <laughs> Because it's Netflix, okay, first I wanna say, listen, y'all, I had to pay for this dang documentary. I did this for you, okay? So definitely consider partnering with the ministry. I'm just kidding, but I did have to pay for it because I don't have Netflix. Um, so I did the free trial just to watch this dang thing. Um, and of course, because it's Netflix, you know, myself and my husband and my friend sat down to watch it and i'm like y'all we gotta come into this with like a grain of salt knowing that it's netflix there's gonna be some sort of agenda here lo and behold it ended very strong with the um trans oh i said the word i'm gonna get kicked off youtube now with it, it ended very strong with the gender confusion agenda in of course you know, support of that. So that was kind of like the, what they were building to, why they even let it on Netflix in the first place sort of thing, because ultimately that was the goal of it was to encourage gender confusion. And essentially they ended the entire series by saying something along the lines of, you know, if you don't support the confused community, um, if you do not support the confused community who are just looking for their own acceptance, just to live their truth, you know, they actually have a lot in common with the cult members. And so if you don't support this community, then actually you're no better than the cult leaders. That was essentially like the final message of the entire series. So I just want to say that, like, I think that there was some value in the, in the documentary, but it's. I don't know if it's necessarily important for y'all who haven't seen it in the chat to hop right on there after onto Netflix and go see it yourself. Just want to start by saying that. So um, just as a little bit of a, uh, you know, escapade or background escapade for what the actual documentary is. It's about these two leaders who unfortunately are still in their active new age business called Twin Flames Universe. So Jeff and Shalia Ion, I believe is how you say their last name. They are married and they are the leaders of this organization. Um, now I wanna say I will be referring to the wife as Megan because that is her name. It is made clear in the first episode that she goes by Shalia because she was 
channeled that name. And so a demon actually gave her that name to go by. Therefore, I will be calling her by the name her parents chose for her when she was a newborn, which is Megan. So Jeff and Megan, they are the owners of the Twin Flames universe. And they have like an ascension school and the classes range from like one grand to six grand. They have all these different courses, right? And ultimately their courses offer the promise that the um, participant will ultimately find their twin, <clears throat> find their twin flame. So right off the bat, you know, they have these people pledging allegiance to them via a financial agreement. You know, money is currency. So where we contribute that currency is where our, our, our kind of agreement is moving toward. And so it's essentially just right out, right out the gate is a financial and a spiritual agreement with the devil, these people that are signing up for this class. And that would be true for anyone that signs up for any sort of new age course, right? And I don't know if you were ever a part of them. I did a couple of those courses, but praise God, I never had enough money back then to do the courses like I really wanted to do because they were always so expensive. I don't know if any of you have experience with that, but you notice like all those new age courses, it's like two grand, three grand. I'm going to sneeze. Excuse me. Two grand, three grand, four grand, all these courses. And yes, you're essentially paying to have problems. That's what someone in the chat said about it. Um, so they're doing this financial exchange with the devil, you know, in in with a with a hope and an expectation and a promise by these two leaders that they will indeed find their twin flame. Right? Again, it's that financial agreement. The Bible says, "Where your treasure is, your heart will be." And so it, it's very similar to how Jesus in the desert was tempted by the enemy, you know, oh, if I, if I, I'm going to give you all the kingdoms of the world, if you just bow down and worship me, that's exactly what this energy exchange of the financial agreement is within this, within this paradigm. So they're an actual cult. This, this entire group is an actual cult by definition. A cult is just a system of religious veneration and devotion directed toward a particular figure or object. And now you know, the people in this group, yeah, they pledge allegiance to the promise that they're going to find their twin flame, but they're doing it under this, under this umbrella of by doing whatever these two say, right? These two are my teachers. They are my gurus. And as you kind of watch the documentary, as more of it unfolds, you recognize that the people are completely subjected to, to doing and performing and and behaving in whatever way these two leaders are encouraging them to be so it actually becomes less about the twin flame thing itself and more about just really obeying their masters it's really sick it's like spiritual slavery i mean it is it's spiritual abuse those people were being spiritually abused and unfortunately apparently still are many in are still in that group spiritually abused these poor these poor victims you know i always say that the devil capitalizes on trauma right i always say that this is number one goal that's what led me into new age basically every new ager's testimony is the same with that front it's some sort of traumatic incident brings you to the very first domino of the new age so to speak and for me it was the death of my grandma which led me to seek out a medium. And from there, it was just the snowboard straight down the hill, deeper and deeper into deception on the broad road of destruction that was ultimately leading me to hell. And so it's like the same thing with this, with the twin flame thing, right? The cult itself, but also like the doctrine itself of the twin flame belief structure, it's people being capitalized on for their they're, they're desperate and they are longing for love, for intimacy. It's like this yearning for romance. And the devil takes that 
and capitalizes on it. And that's exactly what these two leaders, as Jeff and Megan people are doing. They just 100% capitalize on all these poor, poor people who are just funneling thousands of dollars to them every month to ultimately be deceived and be spiritually abused. It was a very, very sad documentary. Um, I mean, these two in the documentary, like, encourage stalking. They encourage obsessive behavior of the clientele. They encourage the clientele to be essentially like psychotic. And of course, they usher them into sinful behaviors. I mean, by the end of the documentary, they even have people transitioning like from male to female. It's really, really sick. They're just like grooming, essentially. It's spiritual abuse. It's spiritual grooming. Um, because of course, they're the gurus, right? And that's always what these leaders in New Age offer people that they have some sort of spiritual authority over you because they have some sort of hidden knowledge that you have to come to them in order to obtain. And that's how you're going to learn. That's how you're going to achieve your next level of enlightenment by pursuing their knowledge that has been given to them because they're so special. They have this cosmic authority, X, Y, Z. Right. They have all the answers for your healing, for your salvation and for your love. Like they just are the universe gurus, whatever. And that's just that's not just these two. It's it is a copy and paste method and ideology of all the spiritual leaders. You can ask my friend Nayla Rose, who's in the chat. She used to have like a six figure business when she was in New Age where she was recruiting people. She was a womb witch and she was recruiting other women because it was her who had the authority. They needed to come to her in order to obtain the secret knowledge that was necessary for them to ascend on their womanhood, spiritual growth and, you know, access the portals in their wombs and all this demonic stuff. That's just what, that's just what spiritual gurus do. I know some still from when I was living in the world that still have all these courses. They, and it, again, it's always this hidden knowledge thing. It's always like, come eat from my tree of hidden knowledge. You get where I'm going with that. It's, it's the serpent. It's the serpent's promise in the garden is what these spiritual gurus are that charge all this money for these courses, for these upgrades, for these cosmic downloads. And it doesn't just end with the, you know, classes online. For me, I never had the money when I was in new age to do like the two grand course or the three grand course, but I was getting weekly Reiki because I just needed this one person. She was so good at Reiki. I needed her to do it. She had healing hands. I needed her to do it or someone else. I needed this person to read my cards because they had a spiritual supernatural gift, right? I needed them to do it. It's just, that's just, it's like a, it's like a spiritual pyramid scheme with the new age. It's like the devil at the top and then he recruits the members and then they recruit those members and they recruit those members. So kind of went on a tangent there, but ultimately what you see in this documentary escaping twin flames from these two cult leaders is the blame shifting because like everything else with the devil, right? It doesn't work. Like it, it doesn't work. So they're looking for their twin flame and what's happening. Oh, they're getting rejected. They're getting rejected. It's not working out. It's this, it's that. And so as a way to kind of alleviate themselves of that pressure, they're blaming the clientele. They're saying, you're not doing enough work, your shadow work. You need to go deeper on your shadow work. Um, they have like that mirroring practice in the new age. If you guys are familiar with what that is, it's basically where so say this person would have a quote twin flame that was rejecting them. The cult leader's answer for that was there's a part of yourself that is in self-rejection. And so as soon as you heal that, this person will stop rejecting you. It, it, it's, it's, it's gaslighting, it's spiritual abuse, and it's again blame shifting because it's it's like, well, nothing we are doing could ever possibly, we're, we're not teaching you anything false. No, never that. It's actually your fault, um, which now, of course, we know with a biblical framework that sin is our responsibility, right? We are to blame for our iniquity. However, just like everything else, the devil takes a little bit of truth 
and then weaves in the lie, right? So that's kind of what's happening here within this structure. And we did, the three of us, myself, my husband, and my friend, while we were watching this documentary, we did see a lot of things that this guy was saying um his the, the jeff dude primarily because if you ask me the wife looks like she was being physically abused bless her heart she was being physically abused spiritually abused by him too but it was mostly him as like the ringleader of this entire organization and we noticed that he would say things that were true like there was there were little pieces um, of truth woven into his tapestry of deception. And that's how the devil works in new age. And that's really something that the documentary did not at all do a good job of getting across. Because again, the whole premise of the documentary was exposing these two. It was exposing the cults. It wasn't exposing the belief of twin flames as the demonic deception that it actually is, which is my goal with this. Um, so we saw the blame shifting with the two leaders. And then we saw, of course, like I said, by the third episode, it's just like unraveling at this point where they're saying like, oh, homosexuality doesn't exist because you're either a divine masculine or a divine feminine energy and your actual biological sex has nothing to do with either one of those things because it's all energy and so you could be a man with a divine feminine and so that's where it got to the point where they were actually encouraging people in their congregation if you will to actually transition and the people were following suit it was really really disturbing um and you know what was really the worst part of it all, which to just the common man that would be watching this that doesn't have the backdrop of the spiritual knowledge that an ex New Ager or that a Christian would have, is that they would always kind of backpedal, right? Like I mentioned, the blame shifting. They would always backpedal and be able to explain themselves by by essentially saying, well, here's the next step, right? We channeled, we did some channeling, we got some new information, and now this is the next step. Like that's another way that they would justify where things weren't working. It was actually using the divine as a scapegoat. And yes, they used God's name. They were using God's name as, oh, this is the person God designed for you. This is the information God has given to us. This guy, Jeff, even goes as far as to say that he is the second coming of Christ. Straight up, that is a claim that he makes in the documentary. That is a claim that he made on behalf of his um, participants in this twin flame universe. He says that he is, the, he is the second coming of Christ. And that's basically why he has the authority to speak on these things. So they always had another step, right? They always had another 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 reason and for everyone in the chat asking i'm get i'm gonna get into exactly what a twin flame is and all those things so just hang out i'm just giving the backdrop of the documentary itself that is inspiring this conversation so jeff and megan always had the backdrop of oh it's this is another step this is another program it's always another course to take always another explanation as to why the original method of operations came to a halt or had failed right and that's just the new age in general y'all like there's always something else to do it's like well if your morning meditation isn't working it's probably because you gotta have a reiki session and if you're having weekly reiki and you're noticing you still have all these blocks well it's probably because Mercury's in retrograde. And actually, if all the stars are aligned and you're still running into all this trouble, well, you know, there's probably just some, some aspect of shadow work that you need to work through. You'll have to sit with yourself. Maybe a sound bath would help. Like that's just new age in a nutshell is the hamster wheel. And that's what you see demonstrated within the documentary with, this, with these cult leaders. They just run people through the uh hamster wheel of well this didn't work because of this you didn't find your twin flame because of this and they always say that they get that next step or the new information how oh they channeled it they channeled it 
So what does that mean? It means that all the information that you see in this documentary, the, the entire three-part series, how you see them take these people through this roller coaster from start to finish, it's literally de a demonic blueprint that they are being downloaded from their channeling sessions. These people are communicating with demons. Demons are the one feeding them information that they are feeding their clientele because that's what channeling is. If you don't have Holy Spirit, you are not in communion with the only Holy Spirit that there is. Every other spirit is thus an unholy spirit and is antithetical to Christ's spirit. It's literally an antichrist. So they're getting all their information from antichrist spirits. And that's, again, new age across the board. It's new age across the board. All the new age gurus, whatever course you're in, it's not just limited to the twin flame thing. Whatever new age course you're in, whatever upgrade course you're in, whatever new age guru that you're seeking for hidden knowledge here or there or whoever you're going to for healing, it's coming from an antichrist spirit because the Holy Spirit is only indwelling and in communion with you if you are a born again disciple, believer of Jesus Christ and his finished work in the cross. If you have faith in him and what he died for and who he is, that is the only way that you have his Holy Spirit. If you are still an unrepentant, unbelieving, carnal-minded sinner, whatever spirit you are communing with is an antichrist spirit because you only have access to the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ through being born again. And so I just want to make that very clear for anyone who is watching that may not know Christ yet. If you don't know Jesus, I want you to know that your spirit guides don't either. Those aren't spirit guides. Those are demons. Satan masquerades as an angel of light, 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen. That is one of the ways in context that the enemy uses in order to steal, kill, and destroy your soul, your eternity, your spirit, your body. Because as, as, as God is triune, so are we. We are body, soul, and spirit, which we'll talk more about at the end. But that and Satan's goal is triune to steal, kill, and destroy. So if you do not know Jesus, I I really just pray that by the end of that, you would just stick around and that by the end of this, you would let him into your heart, that you would confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord because he is. And he's the only one that can give you whatever it is you're looking for in this twin flame doctrine, whatever it is and you're looking for in the upgrade ascension course. He is the one. He is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no subjective reality. There is only objective reality, and it belongs to the author of reality. That is the holy God of the Bible who sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, because he so loved the world. That includes you. He had you in mind when he died on that cross. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So back to why I wanted to record this episode, because that was not in my notes. Twin flames are a hot topic right now because of this documentary being being on Netflix and everyone being on Netflix, right? Twin flames are a hot topic right now. And again, I can see how someone with absolutely no backdrop or foreknowledge of this particular topic or of spirituality or of new age or of any of these things is going to walk away from questions, is going to walk away from the escaping twin flames documentary with questions because the documentary is exposing the cult. It's not exposing the counterfeit demonic belief of the twin flame doctrine. There was actually nothing to be said for the twin flame doctrine itself outside of like a few key, you know, foundational things. Um, there was nothing about it actually being incorrect or deceptive. It was just that the leaders of the cult, the online cult with the school promising people that they would find their twin flame, just that those two were innately wicked and exploitative. And you know what's really interesting about that too? Is that, yes, everyone in that documentary was a victim. 
of these two wicked people. But innately at the core, because they are still unrepentant, do not believe in Jesus Christ as Lord, they're just as wicked. I mean, that's the unfortunate truth. The Bible says in Ephesians that without God's spirit, all people are operating under a spirit of disobedience and that their father is the devil. And so, you know, stuff like this does a really good job of it's like, oh, these good people were hurt, but no one is good outside of God. The Bible says no one is good. No, not one, not one. And so these are wicked, deceived, lost people being exploited by wicked, deceived, lost people, right? And then we see the redemptive arc at the end of the documentary, which is three parts, is that they all end up pursuing the self-healing journey, right? You see one of them with Sage, you see the other one DJing at like a Burning Man kind of thing. You see the other one going to school. Like they get quote, set free of the cults, but the true redemptive arc of the documentary was missing because they all need Jesus. They all need Jesus. The leaders, the participants, and the ones that left. They need Jesus. They may be free from the cult, but they're not free from the lie. They're not free from the bondage. They're not free from the devil. They're not free from their sin. Right? So that's the problem. What every single one of those people featured in the documentary are looking for is actually the love of God. It's the love of God that they are looking for. And they're trying to fill the God-shaped hole, which is in the shape of a cross, with romance, with self-healing. Because that's what the world teaches us. The world teaches us that love will make us whole. Romance will make us whole. Finding our other half will make us whole. Our soulmate, our twin flame, whatever it is, just that, that one will make us whole. Or we'll make ourselves whole, right? It's never... Jesus makes us whole, which is the truth. But like, you know, from Disney, fairy tales, rom-coms, books, television shows, music. Think about all the things you grew up on, all the things you've always been exposed to. All worldly devices that Satan is the prince of, by the way, because he's the prince of this world, have always shoved this idea down our throat that romance is the gateway to salvation, so I, again, I just pray that this episode will serve as like that fourth episode of the Escaping Twin Flames documentary on Netflix, because this is what that Netflix documentary could never show, because by the end of it, they were more interested in perpetuating the confused gender community and advocating for that confusion and that lie, and of course, never anything pro-Jesus. So I pray that people that were that became curious from that documentary would find themselves here, God willing, be born again, be actually set free. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, so yeah, just stick around with an open mind if that's you, because I just I just want you to to realize that and to have a revelation that what you're looking for. And whatever it is you're doing, whatever self-healing journey you're on has always been right in front of you because he has always been there. He has always been omnipresent and he died on a cross for you because God so loved the world. So now into the meat and potatoes, which is extremely relevant because tomorrow is Thanksgiving. What is a twin flame? What is a twin flame for anyone that is asking? So a twin flame, and by the way, <laughs> Depends on where you Google, what is a twin flame? There are many, 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 many different definitions because it's subjective because everything in New Age is subjective, right? So a twin flame is basically an intense soul connection with someone, with someone that is thought to be a person's other half, like literally the other half of your soul, your twin soul. Um, or a mirror soul. It's based on the idea that sometimes one soul gets split into two bodies. Uh, one of the main characteristics of a twin flame relationship is that it will be both challenging and healing. And this is due to the mirroring nature 
of a twin flame, right? They show you your deepest insecurities, your fears, and your shadows. It's, you know, they're supposed to help you overcome all of those things and vice versa. You're basically like tag teams in the universe on your karmic soul mission together because you're essentially the same soul. Um, you're both going to be equally affected of each other by each other is the whole is the whole thing there. Uh, each person is still so this is according to like a twin flame website that it's very important to note that each person explain to me how this is even logical. Each person is still whole on their own says licensed psychotherapist. I'm so glad that these are the people that you know poor lost souls are coming to for guidance to get better. Each person is still whole, but, you know, their soul's split in half and wandering around on the earth somewhere that they have to find and go through some shadow work with. It, it just, everything in New Age is just a house of cards, completely illogical. It does not make sense. It does not make sense. And at the end of this episode, we're going to get into how this is all a counterfeit of scripture and God's biblical design for man and woman man and wife. Okay. So stick around to the end. But this woman says, this psychotherapist says that relationships are meant to encourage you and to become more complete, to become more complete in your own right. So in other words, your twin flame is an important benefactor of your self-healing journey in order to fulfill your karmic soul mission. It's all about you, 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 your mission, your healing, your self-savior complex, your responsibility to be whole, the way that you can only come to, to fullness and completion is through your own soul mission. And, you know, this other person plays a part in it. So it's like, whatever. It's just very demonic and evil and a lie. It's a lie and it's a distraction. And again, it's that hamster wheel. It's a hamster wheel and it capitalizes on that yearning that we all have to be loved by our creator. That's literally what it is. Like this yearning, what had me, and you're going to hear my testimony in a minute, what had me Googling like unexplainable connection with somebody. Blah, 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 blah. That was my yearning for Christ. That was my yearning to actually receive Jesus Christ as my savior. So more on that in a moment. Here are 11 signs you have met your twin flame. <laughs> One, when you met, there was an instant recognition. Two, you're very similar. Three, you complement each other. Four, your insecurities and doubts are amplified. I'm very sorry. I'm sorry for the sarcasm. Five, they feel magnetic. It's just when you come from this garbage, like this is hot garbage, y'all. This is piping hot garbage. When you have the background like I did, it just makes you so mad at the devil. It makes you so mad at the devil for not only deceiving you, but knowing that other people out there are being deceived by this hot garbage. It's actually, it, 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 it's righteous anger. It's like that righteous anger that the Lord has, right? When he sees Israel constantly turning him away. And I'm not comparing myself to God. I'm saying that it grieves me to see people rejecting the truth for all these hot garbage lies. And knowing that the devil is the author of all of this confusion, it's just that self-righteous anger. That's why. I, da, 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 da. So anyway, there's a disclaimer for my sarcasm as I read these 11 signs you have met your twin flame. <laughs> So they feel magnetic. The relationship is tumultuous. You're going to hear a lot about that in a moment. You keep getting back together. So it's like this roller coaster on again, off again thing. The relationship feels very intense. Your connection feels divine, especially the sex. And you have almost a psychic connection and they push you to do and be better. Again, it's because they push and, and um, they push you to do and be better because it's like the self healing journey, right? So it's important to note that the idea of a twin flame and the beliefs surrounding the twin flame gospel are extremely subjective. Like I said, when I first gave the definition, which is just convenient. It's so convenient to new age spiritualists 
because some places you'll find where they say, oh, you should be with your twin flame forever. Like in the documentary, for example, Escaping Twin Flames on Netflix, they're saying like this twin flame, this is the person that you got to be with. You got to make it work with them. It's this is your person. This is your man. This is your woman. Right. And then other stuff that you find online, which is more so kind of like the the gospel I subscribed to when I was a new age is that you may or may not end up with that person. You may or may not end up with that person. But ultimately, if you grew from it, then that's all that really matters. Like if you learned how to love yourself on the journey, then that's fine, right? So you find all these different brackets of exactly what it is. Everything is kind of subjective with the twin flame definition, just like everything else in New Age. And it's just really convenient because, you know, it's easy to defend for New Age spiritualists to say like, oh, keep in mind that, yeah, it's all very, it's all very, uh, it's all very subjective. It's all very unique to your own journey because it falls into that new age lie that we're all unique, right? That all of our journeys are individual and that we're all in pursuit of our own truth and yada, yada, yada. So it's just convenient there. But I wanna just preface that kind of with saying that when you Google this stuff, if you feel confused by the um, large variety, like the smorgasbord, if you will, of like, paradoxal kind of opposing definitions of these things that's no accident so kind of to that point where it comes from the whole new the whole twin flame thing there's a lot of different various origins in the theory of the twin flame lie um i think one and probably the most prominent and this is what i meant when i this is what i meant when when I was in it, like this is what I found to be true, was the philosophical text, the Symposium, where Plato posits that humans once had four legs and arms and two faces, and that the gods, little g gods that, you know, the Lord talks about in scripture, in the Bible, and condemns, um, that those gods felt threatened by that, that humans had four legs, four arms, and two faces. So Zeus split them in two. Zeus, Zeus split the people in two. And that humans would then, you know, kind of be cursed to search for and wander around for their other half for whatever. That's that's something that I remember when I read that. I remember believing that. So there's one of those things. <laughs> okay. Um, and that, of course, could not be more antithetical to the word of God because pretty clear how we were made. You either believe the Bible or you don't, right? Um, so like I said, as far as expounding on the actual origins, there really isn't much outside of other interpretations gathered from multiple religions and worldviews to create this sort of like twin flame salad, um, just like all other new age beliefs that sort of take and leave philosophy out of every world religion and worldview just kind of like a buffet at a restaurant to kind of build what you want and have your own build a bear God. Um, ultimately though, like all that aside, it's kind of a moot point, the origins, the history, the definition, because what you really need to take away from this is that it's just a deception of and a distraction from the truth. That's what the twin flame doctrine is. That's what every, every bit of the new ages, a deception of and a distraction from the truth, okay? And the truth is Jesus. The truth is God's word. And Jesus is God's word made flesh, hallelujah. So that being said, if you're a Christian, I wanna to speak to the Christians, if you're a Christian and you think you have a twin flame, you don't, you don't. More on all of that in a bit, like I said, toward the end of this, um, toward the end of this episode, we are going to get into what the Bible says about man and woman, what the Bible says about man and wife. And I will explain really biblically how the twin flame gospel is a counterfeit, is a counterfeit, right? So here's my twin flame testimony. I have to take a sip of water, put my foot up. Hold on just a moment.
All righty. Uh, so <laughs> my husband gave me permission to share this story. I would just like to kind of preface with that. I would never share anything from my past um, romantically, sexually that he has not given me permission to share because I belong to him and we belong to the Lord. Now, he, my husband understands that person is dead and gone and, you know, our past is buried. We, him and I, have been resurrected in Christ and praise God for our marriage and our covenant. Just all that being said. So my twin flame story. Uh, I basically have always had like a, just this uh, affiliation for romance because grew up without a dad, never knew Christ, all of the things. Lost a lot of weight, got hot according to the world's standards. So then every guy wanted me and it just like fed my ego. I was into the new age. So I was into all of the manifesting, all of the crystals and the yoga. I thought I was just like the hottest thing on planet earth, but I also hated myself at the same time. It's just this weird anomaly in, in new age. And of course I was a feminist and I loved Taylor Swift. I have a whole series on Taylor Swift music being demonic, by the way, you should go check that out. But yes, she, um, 100% influenced me. Not that I'm not being responsible for my own sin, but, you know, what goes into our ear gates and our eye gates influences us. Um, now, I met this guy, and actually I said a prayer earlier that he would find this video and watch it, and that it would be a testimony for him um, that even if he thinks I'm like this crazy person now, that he can just see my life, because you're going to hear toward the end of this story as I explain what happened between us, this amazing, this amazing way that I think God wants to use this experience we had together to testify to him that the Lord is real. And I'll get to that in a moment. But if, if you're watching this, you please listen. Okay. I will not say your name. Um, I met this guy somewhere that I used to work years ago. Um, and it was like this instant, just like we just heard in the how you know you met your twin flame it was this instant draw this instant draw and i was actually in a relationship at the time with the man that's now my husband um and it was just instant draw to this guy right and he had gone through some trauma that was going around the workplace something happened in his family and it i had compassion for it because i had been through some similar things in my life at one point and I just wanted him to know that he wasn't alone. But I also, I think it was like a subconscious, like, I want to talk to you. Um, at the same time, me and my, who was then my boyfriend, now husband, were having some problems. We did end up breaking up at the time. And so we were broken up towards the part where I actually pursued conversation with this guy. Reached out to him. I told him, you know, like, if you need someone, I'm here. I told him I've been thinking about him with what he's going through. And I remember in my mind, the moment I said, I've been thinking about you, the way he looked at me, I can still see it. The way he looked up at me and smirked, it was like the demons in him recognized the demons in me. And it was like the, it was like the green light to go. And so a couple weeks pass by, he ends up reaching out to me and saying, yeah, you know, you know, I've been thinking about that talk. Like, I think we should, I would love to, like, why don't we after work, blah, blah, blah. I chicken out, whatever. <laughs> Ultimately, we end up, it's Halloween now. This is Halloween 2019 where our coworkers are having a party for context I, I worked in the service industry. So if you've ever worked in the service industry, it's just like a breeding ground for lust and fornication and debauchery and drunkenness and immorality and like all of the sin. Like I feel more so than any other work environment. That's the service industry. So it's Halloween and there's a party and I'm single at the time. And I ask him, so you go in and you know, at this point we're having these interactions where 
I'm like pressing for them to happen. I'm making sure I go this way in the restaurant just so I can pass him. And I'm always wearing like my, our uniform had to be like black pants or a skirt and like black shirt. So I always wore these black mini skirts, really, really form fitting, really tight and black stockings and really tight black shirts. And I used to wear, this is like, in I used to wear my collar to work. Like I had a collar choker and I would wear it to serve families in. Tell me you had like a Jezebel spirit without telling me. Um, I was just very like minxy. Like I was very whatever. So the first time I really recognized I was in trouble with this guy was he was a bartender. I was a server. I needed help with something. Some guests wanted a drink or whatever. And I didn't know. I didn't know how what the drink was. And I asked another server, can you tell a bartender to come over here? So this guy, he, I just, he comes up behind me, puts his hand on my back, lower back and says, what do you need? The second he put his hand on me, my entire body lit up like electricity, just all up and down my spine, all over my body. And it was, what did we just read in the twin flame signs? Recognition. It was like this energetic recognition, which I know now with the spiritual wisdom I have by the Holy Spirit. It was our demons. It was not because he was my twin flame. It was our demonic connection forming, right? Um, our demons recognizing each other and coming into agreement with one another. So he, yeah, um, <laughs> did that. And then I knew I was in trouble. So it would be from there, all these little interactions I try having with him similar to that, like anything just to feel that feeling again. Halloween comes, there's the party. I ask if he's going. He says, oh, I don't know, ends up going. Um, I had never done, and, and you're just going to notice how it just spirals into more and more and more sin. And the deeper you go with the sin, like the more agreement it is with the demonic, right? Because sin is like moth to a flame for the demons. And so he, uh, he goes to the party. I'm at the party. I'm single at the time. I'm very sad. Just whatever. I was wearing an alien costume. And by costume, I mean, I looked like Miley Cyrus at the like 2000. 11 VMAs basically I had on it was horrific it was basically my underwear in 40 degree weather I was an alien because aliens dress like that I guess anyway so uh yeah we're at the party we're standing around a fire he asks me if I want to if I uh if I want to try some of his I don't know if I can say specific drug names on YouTube without getting taken off he asks me if I want to take a certain drug, Molly. Okay, so we can use the the street name for it, Molly. He's like, you want to you want to have some of this? And I was like, are you having it? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, okay, like just okay, you know, it's really nice. I'd never done that before in my life. Um, that's the hardest drug I had done at that point, other than acid before. But I do the Molly, okay? Um, yeah, <laughs> I do the Molly. And um, just standing around the fire and he kind of, you know, he knows it's my first time. So he's kind of discerning that. And he's like, you want to go smoke with me? And I'm like, yes, you know, so we go to his car and he decides to tell me after we both do Molly together and are alone in his car. This is when he chooses to tell me he has a girlfriend. Um, And I should have gotten out, but I didn't. And um. We didn't, we didn't fornicate, but we were exchanging sexual energy, if you will. And it was the first time I learned, you know, like Molly is very, is very receptive to touch. So everything felt like, like you could just touch your face and it felt like, uh, like amazing. I, I don't know. It was, it was a weird thing and I was new to me. And so I want to touch him. He wants to touch me. You know, it's like, it's just very inappropriate, but it was never, it was never crossing a line, even though the line was crossed the second he gave me a drug. And so whatever, right? That night we stayed up, we talked from midnight to 5 a.m. And it was just like the trauma bond was formed, right? The soul tie was formed. It was, we didn't even need to have sex. It was just the sin that knitted us together in that sense. Um... And, and I, I thought I loved him like just one night I felt that I loved him and like, I felt like I knew him forever. I felt like I had never connected with somebody so easily before. 
and all the red flags, every single red flag, I ignored every single one from the from the fact that he told me that he thought about stabbing people to him having a girlfriend to him confiding in me how many sexual partners he had had in his past and his body what his body count looked like it was it was it was awful I mean I ignored every single red flag it's like every single red it wasn't even a flag it was like a ship it was like a big red ship and I'm like great let's go sailing it, it was so bad y'all um but it was like everything we just read it was just it was it was electric and it was it was it was like familiar and i was so spiritual in my new age stuff i was so spiritual and i just knew we had this soul connection and i had some context of twin flames and i thought he was my twin flame after that night i just could not stop thinking about him it was obsessive and so because i was an astrologer I, you know, when's your birthday? Me asking when his birthday is so I can look up our astrology. And then these little illicit affairs continue happening, continue happening. I, I keep getting in the car with this person that has told me he has a girlfriend. Every time I get in the car, I'm like, maybe he broke up with her. He doesn't just continues to just be with me in this sense where we're just talking. We're just drinking. We're just smoking. We're not actually doing anything. Um, as if sin has a gray area. And, um, I just, I feel so, I mean, that person's dead. I rebuke all shame in Jesus name. Um, yeah. So it was just like that. Uh, and I'm, I'm getting to the, I'm getting to the point here. I just would just continue, continue, continue this, this trauma bond. Just keep, keep on with it. Keep on with it. And I, I explained to him our astrology, our charts, how we were so, we were so compatible. And literally, y'all, our astrology, my birthday was almost two, it was like one day short of being an exact match, astrologically speaking, like around the zodiac calendar. It was a perfect match, astrologically speaking. It was, it used to blow me away. And I'm like, this is it. This is him. He's my twin flame. This is the guy. And I would explain these spiritual concepts to him. And, uh, you know, he was really intrigued by it because he always, he said, I want what you have. I want that. He's, he used to call it like my yogi groundedness. He's like, I want that yogi Zen mindset that you have. Um, he was like really thirsty for that in like that he saw in me even though i was miserable i just did a really good job at being spiritual so whatever we just continued on this way the taylor swift songs are only contributing i'm sending him taylor swift songs we're drinking we're smoking we're drinking we're smoking again i'm single he's not so i'm i'm trying to justify this in my mind this like gray area and it was a mess, y'all. Like, it was a mess. I was absolutely obsessed with him. We never even kissed, and I was convinced that he was my twin flame. Like, that he was it. It was sick. It was sick. And I've repented for that. Praise God. It's all in the past. I end up getting back together with my um, now husband because I realize it's never going to happen for me and this guy. COVID happens. We don't see each other the whole time. Then we get back to work after COVID and he tells me I think about you all the time, even when I'm with my girlfriend. Like, I look over in bed and I see you and, like, all this stuff, you know. Tells me he thinks about me when, you know, you can you can fill in the blanks, sexual immorality in every context. It was it was just so toxic. It was so toxic. And it was all, and it was exactly, it was like the definition of twin flame always coming back together because we would try and break it off. We would end up d just falling back into the pattern. He would cut me off or I would cut him off. And it was like, well, mm -hmm, let's just keep it up. Or it was just toxic. It was so toxic. And I was enthralled by it. I was addicted to it. And one time I told him, you know, when, when me and my now husband were broken up when we were both in the world, there were many times where I tried to tell myself, you know, even though we had loved each other since we were 14, I would tell myself, it's time to move on. We tried to make it work. It's not working. 
I'm going to release him because that's the spiritual language. I'm going to release him. I'm going to give him away. Right. Then I would see a baby. I would be out in public and I would just see a baby. And the way that it would grieve my heart, it was like God pursued me even in my wickedness like there are so many god moments in my life while i was still dead in my trespasses where i saw him leaving the 99 for this one and that was one of them was the way he would use babies to always show me that my now husband was actually the will for my life so that was just like something I couldn't ignore. Every time I saw babies, I just would weep and be like, this isn't right. Like, this isn't right. This isn't right. I need to be with him again. He is the one for me. Not because he's my twin flame, but it was like, it was just, I can't explain it. It was God. And I, and I told that to my twin flame once, the person I thought was my twin flame. I told him that story. And y'all, you know what the full circle moment is that I, I realized just earlier today as I was preparing this stream, talking to my friend about this whole story is that I'm pregnant with my husband's child. We got pregnant on our wedding night in a covenant with God. We both were born again, dis now disciples of Jesus Christ, got married and got pregnant with our baby on our wedding night. And I realized today that God was showing me then <laughs> that my husband was always his divine plan for me. He is the one <laughs> that he took me from his rib and formed me. You know, like that is us, that we are one flesh. And so if you, you know who you are, watch this. I know you remember that moment where I told you that and I pray that if you see this five years from now, 10 days from now, if you ever see this, you would look back at that moment and you would recognize that what I'm telling you now, that the testimony of my life, being pregnant with that baby that I told you about, that every time I saw a baby in public, I couldn't stop thinking about the man that's now my husband and feeling like it was wrong I wasn't with him. God gave me that baby. That's because of Jesus. And I'm praying for you that you would be born again too because God loves you. Jesus loves you. He led you to check up on me and to watch this knowing somewhere in the back of your mind it would be about you. He led you to watch this because he wants you free. He wants you and your now wife free to be in covenant with him. So that happened. Anyway, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. Yes, God was showing me a prophetic vision of my, my husband and my future baby. And so, yes, that all happened. And we went back and forth. We would still meet up. It was just so toxic and gross. And I... I don't even remember how we ended up cutting it off. It just it just basically came to a halt where I didn't I didn't want to hurt my now husband anymore. And he I think he would have kept meeting up with me if if I kept it up, but I I knew one of us had to make it stop and I had to be the one to do it. So I don't remember how that conversation went. I remember the last time we saw each other. The last time we saw each other, I remember when he hugged me by, he said See you next time it happens. So there never was a next time. And he was one of the very first people to unfollow me and unfriend me from every single platform when he saw that I became a Christian because the demonic agreement, you know, it was not just a physical thing that made him do it. The demonic agreement had been nulled in Jesus' name. So that's my twin flame story. A very short version of it. Um, he is... <laughs> he he is so good. The Lord is so good. And so just more on that twin flame dynamic, right? It's, it's that... It's that intoxication. It's that longing. It's that... That... 
yearning, that that unanswered question, right? Like I said, I never even fornicated with the guy. It was all like energetic. I'm using air quotes if you're listening. It was all like energetic, um, sexual and whatever. So, it, and I mean, it wasn't the physical too, but it was like between ourselves. Like I said, you can use fill in the blanks. But anyway, it, 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 that that's just like the whole twin flame thing. Like what I just discussed is my testimony. I don't share that because I, I enjoy like showing you all, letting, letting everyone peek into the grave of my former life. But I think it's important because I'm not the only person in this chat. I'm not the only person watching on the replay with a story like this. There are people watching this that are in a story like this right now. And I want you to know it's not going to end well. It's not going to end well. This person is not the person God designed for you. I thought he was, by the way, because even when I was a new age, I believed in God. It just was not the God in the Bible. It was not the God in the Bible. It was my Build-A-Bear God of the new age. Like I said, it's, it's, it's always like all these different beliefs to just make a salad of religion that is easily digestible for you to consume rather than the truth, which is Jesus himself. And so I believed in God. I thought God put this guy on my path. Of course, I equated God to the universe, that the universe wanted us to be together, blah, 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 blah. All of these things. If that's you, please hear my heart here. Like the universe did not send you this person. The universe did not send you this person. If it is this up and down roller coaster, if it is, if it is nothing but chemistry and passion and lust and and there's so much sin surrounding your circumstances surrounding your your relational dynamic basically the entire paradigm of your relationship is on the foundation of sin which you may not think is sin but i want you to consider that you are miserable you are miserable in this the up and down of this you're addicted to the high of it because the low of it is in suffering okay and that up and down that up and down that up and down that is a byproduct of the sin like I said that is the foundation so whether or not you believe in sin is irrelevant to the fact that it's real and that it is something that you are currently stuck in a loop of you are in bondage to and because of the sin you are in contract you are in agreement with the demonic realm operating in a spirit of of disobedience that is what the bible says the sin is moth is like moths to a flame for the demonic energies for the for the demonic spirits and so it's just i just i just pray that you would you would have a revelation that what you're looking for in that person and the person you think is your twin flame you're not going to find it in them and you're not going to find it in yourself. It doesn't matter how much shadow work you do. It doesn't matter how many times you look in the mirror and say, I love myself. I accept myself. I, I don't reject my, it doesn't matter. It's never going to work. It's never going to work. It's a bandaid on a gunshot wound every single time. It's going to leave you empty. It's going to just fill you up only for, for it to just excrete, excrete and leave you empty. You're going to continue thirsting. It's always going to be a thirst. But I have good news is that there is living water. And once you actually consume the living water of Jesus Christ, the Bible says that that pours out of you, that, fill, that pours up and out of you, it flows from you. So you literally never go hungry or thirsty again because you have him. Whatever you're looking for in the twin flame in the new age, you're never going to find it. It's Jesus. It is Jesus alone, okay? And so, um, oh, okay, so what does the Bible say? Ooh. Oh, Lord, help me. Holy Spirit, help me. What does the Bible say? Um, the major counterfeit of twin flames, right? The major lie, okay, the major lie of the demonic twin flame gospel is that your soul has been split in half and another human being is just 
wandering around the planet with the other half of you, and it is your responsibility to find that person in order to spiritually evolve, okay? That's, and, and so the counterfeit there is that the reality is that your soul is separated from God at birth, not your twin flame. Your soul and your spirit are separated from God when you were born into a fallen world of sin. Sin separated you from completion, not the cosmic fate of the universe, sending you on your own journey of personal salvation to fulfill some sort of karmic mission by reconciliation with your twin flame. No, salvation comes from Christ alone. God, the holy God, the omnipotent God, the perfect God of the Bible is the completion of your soul. He is the one that you are looking for. You are not wandering around searching for your other half. You are a broken whole that needs reconciliation with your creator. You are a broken creation looking for your creator. You are not looking for the other half of yourself. You are looking for the to fill the God-shaped hole that's in the shape of a cross inside of your heart that only he can fill. He is the only one that can reconcile you mind, body, and spirit. It says that in the word that he, the perfect God of peace, is the only one that sanctifies us mind, or I'm sorry, body, soul, and spirit. He brings us to completion. Your twin flame is not going to do it. You're not going to do it because, of course, that's the doctrine with the twin flame thing, right? It's that you need to find this other half of your soul in order for you to do the shadow work so that you can become whole and, and love yourself and heal yourself and find self-satisfaction and bring salvation and spiritual enlightenment onto your own journey. No, it is a counterfeit lie from the pit of hell that the devil is using as a way to distract you. He is using as a way to steal, kill, and destroy. That is the holy trinity of his, his demonic mission in this world while we are here is to steal, kill, and destroy your life and your eternity. And this is how he does it, by convincing you that you are half of a soul looking for the other half of a soul to bring your own soul to completion. But it's found in the completion of reconciliation with Jesus Christ, who is the only way to God. That is who you are looking for. That is who I was looking for when I was in a car doing ecstasy with some dude who told me he thought about killing people who had a girlfriend. That's what I was looking for because he made me feel something. What I was looking for was love. I was looking for unconditional love. I was looking for the only love that God can give any of us because he's the one that created us. You see, we are all creation. And so as creation, we all have this need, this God-given birthright need and desire to know our creator because there is something within our spirit that recognizes that we are not the creator ourselves, despite everything that new age teaches, despite what this twin flame doctrine teaches, we are not responsible for our own spirit. Only God can bring us to salvation and to completion. And so because we are creation, we walk around feeling at a loss until we know the one who created us. That is the only way that you are going to know what wholeness is. Until then, you will keep wandering around believing things like twin flames. You will Google, I have an unexplainable connection with this person. Could it be that they are my soulmate or twin flame? You will stay up late Googling, why do I feel like I come from another planet like I used to and believe that you're a star seed? You will fall for the tarot. You will fall for the astrology. Or maybe the spiritual stuff doesn't appease to you, but you will go out and drink and you will have one night stands and you will go to therapy and you will put yourself in these compromising situations over and over again because you're addicted to your sin because it's the only thing that makes you feel something when what you're really looking to feel is whole and the only one that can make you 
feel whole or understand what wholeness is, is the one that you continually reject your creator. You just want to walk around in this, in this vessel of creation and create more havoc for yourself instead of being reconciled to the creator of yourself. You need Jesus. We all need Jesus, okay? Thank you, Holy Spirit. And I wrote here as a joke, hashtag Jesus is your twin flame. But it feels very inappropriate to say it after that after that word, I just, I feel, I feel the heart of the father just grieving for, for all of creation that doesn't know him, that is walking around so deceived and so lost. And they're just seeking and seeking and seeking. And we will say a prayer for those people at the end. And if that's you and you see me breaking down right now, it's because I love you. I don't even know you. But you know what? The one who knows me knows you. He knows you. And the Bible says he is the lover of your soul. The Bible says that God is the lover of your soul. You do not have a twin flame. Okay, you do not have a twin flame. You do not have another half of your soul walking around on this earth searching for you to be made whole as a self-healing karmic mission. You just need to know the lover of your soul, who is Jesus Christ. He's the only one that can fill the God-shaped hole and reconcile you to completion and sanctify you completely body spirit and soul. He is the only one. The only reconciliation is made by the cross. Thess Thessalonians 5, 23 through 24. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. So if you feel that right now, if you don't know the Lord and you feel that little tiny voice inside of you, it's because it's your creator calling for to you. Psalms says deep calls out to deep. If you feel that call in that really deep place within you, that is him calling you to himself. Jesus said, no one can come to the father until my father in heaven draws them. That's him drawing you to himself. And he who calls you is faithful. He will do it. The God of peace will sanctify you completely your whole spirit, your whole soul, your whole body. Like I said at the beginning, we are triune beings. Everything is in threes in the, in the gospel. There are three rebellions. There's the, there's the omnipotent, omnipresent God who is made of three, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The devil's demonic, the devil's demonic mission is the, is the trinity of steal, kill, and destroy. Everything is threes. We are spirit, soul, and body. And the God of peace may sanctify us completely. He who calls you is faithful to do it. He will surely do it. The God of peace himself, Thessalonians says there that the God of peace himself, as in himself, he makes you whole. The God of peace himself, his job, his duty, his mission, the Lord, he makes you whole. No other human can make you whole, including you, including you. The only one who can sanctify you is the one, is the one. And you know, what was so disgusting about the Escaping Twin Flames documentary is that like I said, with Netflix, there's always some sort of propaganda. There's always some sort of hidden agenda, right? Like when we sat down, I mentioned this at the beginning. I said to my husband and to my friend, let's remember that this is Netflix. So let's wait to see whatever woke mission they have as the foundation of this. And it was the gender confused 
thing, right? It was it was all about that. It was all about pledging allegiance to that. And they were saying that, you know, the, oh, these poor people in the cult, they just want to be accepted, just like this community wants to be accepted. And it's all about, you know, the two cult leaders were telling people, you're masculine, you're feminine, so you have to... Um, you have to transition to become the opposite sex because because that's your energy, right? And the people in the thing were saying, no, that's up to you. Like that's all that's all completely subjective to the person. If you if you were born feeling like you need to you need to change, then you're that's up to you to do that. It's up to a, not up to a cult leader. So that was like the whole underlying message was that. It's all about self-acceptance, 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 self-acceptance. So they were perpetuate, perpetrating the message that what the cult leaders were doing was wrong, but, right, but it's not wrong to actually want to mutilate yourself to become the opposite sex. But what does the Bible say? The God of peace himself, his job, his duty, his mission, he makes you whole. You cannot make yourself whole. Mutilating your body cannot make you whole. Deciding that I think I was born in the wrong body. It doesn't make you whole. That is a counterfeit born again. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That surgery that they have done, that is a counterfeit born again because you're being born again of the flesh. The word says you need to be born again of the spirit to see the kingdom of God. You're never going to find your fulfillment in a, in a, in a, in a surgery, in a sexual identity, in a sexual orientation, in another person, in a twin flame, in a romance, in the new age, in the world, in your sin. Jesus Christ is the only one who can make you whole. And I say that as someone who was walking in freedom. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You know, for anyone new here, I spent the greater part of my life wanting to kill myself, wanting to be dead. He delivered me from suicide. He delivered me from depression and he delivered me from anxiety. He made me a new creation. He reconciled me to my creator and gave me my purpose because we all actually have the same purpose in this life. We all share the same purpose. It's just that the devil has perverted it and has us live for ourselves when really we were created in his image. We were created in his image. And so our purpose in life is to look like him. And so the devil wants us to look like anything other than the Lord. That's why there is so much sin that's why there is so much that's why there is so much deception and heartache and vanity and sadness and all of these things because the devil doesn't want us to look like him the only one Jesus Christ the god of peace himself who can sanctify you now let's talk about sex for a moment because one of the things with twin flames is that uh you know the sex should be on fire and it encourages fornication like it doesn't care if your sex is within the context of man and wife which is the only context that sex should be within by the way have you ever noticed how people that sleep around People that have one night stands get themselves into these situations where they find themselves in cycles of misery and heartache. That's because you're having sex outside of the biblical covenant. You're coming into agreement with sin. You're coming into this demonic, uh, this demonic influence. And that, and so you're going to be miserable. Um, I need a sip of water. Excuse me. Okay, 1 Corinthians says, this is what 1 Corinthians says about sex. Um, where is it? Now, concerning the matters about which you wrote, it is good for a man not to have sexual relations with a woman, but because of the temptation to sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife and each woman her own husband. The husband should give his wife her 
conjugal rights and likewise the wife to her husband for the wife does not have authority over her own body but the husband does hallelujah likewise the husband does not have authority over his own body but the wife does do not deprive one another except perhaps by agreement for a limited time that you may devote yourselves to prayer but then come together again so that satan may not tempt you because of your lack of self-control now as a concession not a command i say this I wish that all were as I am, Paul speaking, but each has his own gift from God, one of kind and another. To the unmarried and the widows, I say that it is good for them to remain single as I am, but if they cannot exercise self-control, they should marry, for it is better to marry than to burn with passion. And boy, that context of burn can be used in many different ways, right? Because we burn with passion, but we also burn in eternal torment if we... um submit to our passions so that's what the bible says about sex and now right away you know there are people that are going to get up in arms about my body belongs to my husband what do you mean why does it trigger you so bad to hear a wife's body belongs to her husband when you go out and give yourself away to anyone you know, you think someone's hot and it's just this perverted mindset that the devil gives us, right? Oh, I have so much authority over my body that I have the sexual liberty to sleep with whoever I want. But that is such a demonic lie from the pit of hell because you actually have no authority over your own body by continually giving it away to people that are not your man or, or wife, you give it away. You don't actually have any authority over it at all because you have no self-control like the scripture says. And so Satan tempts you to the sexual immorality. And then we have this disguise of sexual freedom and sexual liberation. It's such, a, it is such an evil lie from the pit of hell, this idea of sexual freedom. I will do an episode on feminism. Don't you worry. So, you know, saying that my husband, my body belongs to my husband, it is just, it, it's actually the most freeing thing ever because, you know, first of all, my body is not my own. It says that in scripture, your body is a, is a sacrifice to the Holy Spirit. Your body is a, is a living temple of the Holy Spirit. You're supposed to live alive unto the Lord and God, you have to remember y'all, like God designed sex. He made it to feel good. He created the orgasm like sex is God's design, but Satan has taken it as sexual liberty when really it is sacred and it is, it is, it is just the embodiment of intimacy. You know, that verse in Matthew where the Lord says, there will be some who, who come to me in my name and I will tell them depart from me. I never knew you. If you look up the context of that word in the Greek or Hebrew, I forget which one, that context of new is, is actually on the same, on the same, uh, defining spectrum of sexual intimacy. It's that, it's that close. Like it is, sex is just the physical representation of ultimate intimacy alt as because it's as close as you can physically get with someone it's as close as you can physically get with someone in the flesh as you can be to someone in the flesh and so of course satan just has us out just fornicating all over the place having that with ever, any old person right of course he does because then it then it doesn't mean anything but guess what those soul ties are still created the bible says when man and woman lie together they become one flesh Right? You don't have to have a legal marriage to do that. The Bible says you become one flesh when you have sex with someone. So the devil just has, has us out having sex with everybody because pff, now we're going to have all these soul ties to people and it's going to ache and we're going to wonder why we can't get over this person. We're going to wonder why we can't move on. We're going to wonder why we cry ourselves to sleep at night, why we feel lonely. It's because that, <laughs> see, twin flame is a corruption of one flesh. You become one flesh. You aren't just you weren't just born as, as, as like missing the other half of yourself. The Lord brings you to completion and then you become from there the physical demonstration 
of Christ and his church through the covenant of marriage. And then that's exemplified in our physical act of, of the marriage bed, right? So yeah, Satan has just corrupted sex because again, with, with the twin flame dynamic, sex is all about spiritual ascension. Whereas in, in this context of 1 Corinthians, we see that sex is indeed between man and wife, a very, very, very spiritually unifying, enlightening act to partake in because you belong to each other. You belong to each other. And so you submit your body to each other. Like it's actually amazing and beautiful and it's everything. But the sex with twin flames has corrupted that, has 100% corrupted that. Um, now, the twin flame paradigm also programs people to kind of accept abusive and counterfeit love, which is all the devil will ever offer you, again, because his only mission is to steal, kill, and destroy. And now I want to say that, like, you know, there's truth to that to that mindset of the relationship should be tough, I'm not saying it should be abusive because if you both truly know the Lord, your relationship will not be abusive. That's just the truth of the matter. But we are still in our bodies. We are in our flesh. And while we should be walking in the spirit, while we should be walking in the spirit as man and wife, if the Bible says, if we sin, not when we sin, if we should stumble, and we do submit to that flesh, there will be relational challenges. There just will be. It's the reality of it. It's a fruit test, right? It's a reminder that, oh, we're looking too much at ourselves than we are at him, right? So I'm not here to say that like, if you're in a biblical covenant, it's gonna be perfect all the time. That's not what I'm saying. Don't mishear me there. Relational challenges exist. So there's the truth within the tapestry of lies of the twin flame thing is that there will be challenges. There will be challenges in a biblical covenant as well, especially if your eyes are always on each other and or always on, you, you know, I mean that from like a horizontal vantage point, because if your eyes are on him, then you're just in union because he's perfect. That's just the truth of the matter. Mark 10:9. What God has joined together, let no one separate. So the Bible makes it clear that marriage is intended to be an unbreakable bond, just like the twin flame thing, right? But it's, you see, marriage, it's marriage. Marriage is a biblical bedrock that should be respected and revered by both people. So you see the mindset is completely different there with the twin flame structure where it says the challenges will arise, but you have to pursue it. Why? Because it's a part of your own spiritual growth. It's you working through your own karmic soul mission. The biblical bedrock of marriage, what God has joined together, let no man separate. It means that when challenges arise, you revere the Lord way too much to let your flesh come between the spiritual covenant and the spiritual union that you both have this immense privilege to be walking in together, to be joined in together with him. Ephesians says that there's the string. It's the three of you. There's another three. It's the three of you in the marriage, you, your spouse, and the Lord. So the, the mindset, the intention, the heart posture is completely different. The twin flame world says relationships are going to be hard because it's reflecting all of this stuff that you need to work on within yourself and all the shadow work you need to pursue. The biblical worldview says relationships will be hard because it's a reminder for you to get your eyes back on the cross and stop focusing on yourself. Because if you're focused on yourself, then that means you're not focused on him. Oh, but my spouse did this. My spouse did that. My spouse put me through this. I don't care what you've been through. I say that respectively or respectfully, but you have to remember what he's been through. When you're going through something in your marriage, make it more about what he went through than what you're going through. Because I promise you that you will find your way back to each other very quickly if you find your way back to him first. I've been married seven months, so I'm a marriage counselor, an expert now. Um, 
no, but really he's taught us so much about marriage and just the, the relationship between myself and my husband, you know, we've known each other. I've known him more than half of my physical life. And I've known him 100% of the time in my born again life and he with me. And so we have just grown together so much more in these last two years than we have in the entire 15 years that we knew each other in the world. There has been more growth, more healing, more wholeness, more joy. <laughs> and we have this baby to show for it. Sayla, who is due in real time, if you're watching this, she's due in two months. She is the testimony of the Lord. The, the word says children are a gift from the reward from God. And she is the testimony to what he, the work that he does through a marriage. And so I'm not trying to be like, oh, I know everything. I've been married seven months. I'm just saying that don't let my time frame, don't gaslight me on that because we both pursue God so much that he, he in turn teaches us so much, right? It says, seek him, he will seek you. And that's exactly what we do in our marriage. So we have learned a lot. Now, another translation of that verse to bring the full context of the counterfeit is where we see Matthew 19, 4, 6, where Jesus says, have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female and said, therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. So twin flame is the counterfeit of one flesh. I'll say that again. Twin flame is. The twin flame gospel is the counterfeit of God's design for marriage where two become one flesh, right? Twin flames is the devil's way of taking advantage of the God-given longing for God, but it is also the way that he counterfeits one flesh, right? The Lord is very clear when, when that two become one, whereas with the twin. Oh, that's so good. Thank you, Lord. So the word is very clear that the two become one flesh. The twin flame gospel says that one has become two split in half. And now you have to come back together in this life in order to reach that oneness again. No, that is antithetical to God's truth. The truth is, like I said before, the longing we feel for what we think is our twin flame romance is actually the longing as creation to know our creator. And once we are reconciled and have that heart, that cross-shaped hole filled by Jesus Christ, and he reconciles us back to the father, back to God, and we are sanctified to completion, then we become one flesh with man or wife who has also been sanctified by the God of peace himself, has been reconciled, knows Jesus, has born again. It's two born again people coming together who have been made whole through Christ as one flesh in covenant with God. So you see how the devil has just completely perverted this entire thing like he does all things and created the twin flame gospel. It's so perverted. Now, from there, like I said, the twin twin flames is the devil's way of taking advantage for the God-given longing for God, right? And then from there, it creates an idolatry of relationships because if you are always out here thinking that a relationship is going to make you better, that's idolatry, right? That's that's a false sense of salvation and fulfillment. Before I came to know the Lord, you know, I struggled with all these things, the twin flame story that I just told y'all, but I also struggled with relationship anxiety. Like I was constantly with the guy that's now my husband. He was always, you know, by the world standards, a good guy. Um, 
And, you know, we always had peace. Our relationship always had this underlying peace. It wasn't chaotic. It wasn't tumultuous like it was with my, quote, twin flame. And so guess what? I thought something was wrong with him. I thought, well, this is too boring. When the truth is, it wasn't boring. It was just like a fruit of the spirit that I didn't have a word for because I didn't know what fruit of the spirit was. It was just exemplatory of fruits of the spirit that neither one of us actually had, but somehow our relationship was still demonstrating that, right? He always brought me peace. He always brought me stillness and, and calmness and a sound mind. Whereas these other guys made me feel crazy and tumultuous and exhilarating and passionate and blah, blah, blah. Feelings, 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 flesh, flesh, flesh. Sin, addiction, blah, blah, blah. It was never enough. So I always pursued these toxic men. Good Lord, thank you, Jesus, for saving me from that. So I had all this relationship anxiety surrounding my now husband because he was boring. No, he was actually just good. Um, and so, you know, as good as he could be as a sinner. But I had an idolatry of relationships. And I know people like that, people that I love that uh, love so much that have just made an idol of relationships. They think, oh, well, you know what? It actually it is. I just need to love myself first so that I can love someone else. No, you don't need to love yourself first so that you can love someone else. You need to know who loves you, Jesus Christ, the lover of your soul, so that your love will pour out of you from his place. And then you can love someone else because you already know that you are loved by your creator. That is the missing piece of relationships. We're all out here. The devil's teaching everyone in therapy and all these things that, oh, you can actually love someone else only by loving yourself first. You have to fill your cup in order to give to another when that is just, no, it's not about healing yourself. It's not about loving yourself. It's actually about dying to yourself, to being born again and having that revelation that you are loved by a perfect holy God that sent his only son to die on a cross for you. And then when you have the love of the father, when you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and savior, you are overflowing with that love. You are over overflowing with that love. You look so much like him that you can't help but love someone else because you're already whole in him and you're not looking for wholeness in that other person. You're not looking for wholeness in yourself because he's the one that's brought you to completion. And now you can actually thrive within a healthy relationship because it's a relationship that is actually demonstrative of the covenant that he has with his church, that he has with his people, because it's actually from him. Goodness gracious. I'm almost done here. I'm going so long, much longer than I wanted to go, but that's okay. We still have to go to Walmart. Naila, you're watching this. Uh, okay. So <laughs> Genesis two verses 23 through 24 say that then man said, this is at last bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife and they shall become one flesh. So, you know, when no suitable companion is found among all the living beings, this is the very beginning of creation. God fashions a woman from the man's own flesh. Yes. Okay. We already see where the perversion comes from of, oh, two different souls, right? That text in Genesis highlights the sense of oneness that exists between a man and a woman. As Adam joyfully proclaims, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. It is so romantic. Like your husband says that to you, you just melt, right? But this terminology is used elsewhere in blood relatives, Genesis 29, 14, all these things. This sentence and the story of Eve's creation both make the point that marriage creates the closest of all human relationships. It's not your twin flame, it's marriage, okay? It is also important to observe that God creates only one Eve for Adam, not several Eves or another Adam or Eves for Eves and Adams for Adams. Just putting that out there. Um, it's heterosexual monogamy as the divine pattern of marriage that God established for all of creation. Pause for water. Okay. Um, so, so the devil attacks God. The devil attacks God by attacking God's design for man and woman across all spectrums, all spectrums, light, 
the nuclear family, the 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 gender confused community, the rainbow community with the sexual fluid fluidity and the confusion and all these things. He attacks the nuclear family a thousand different ways. That's how the devil uh, that's how the devil attacks God's design is by attacking that I'm sorry. Let me let me start over. I have to think about my clips for reels. So we have to talk in <laughs> in a unified fashion. The devil attacks God by attacking God's design for man and woman across all spectrums. This is how he gets to and disrupts the nuclear family. And I am convinced that this is his number one goal to steal, kill, and destroy the nuclear family. Why? Because of what it just said up there in Genesis, right? It says that marriage is indeed a perfect picture of Christ and the church. That's why he wants to destroy it. That's why the enemy wants to destroy it. Marriage is the literal demonstration of the perfect union with the father only made possible by Jesus Christ. That's why the devil attacks God's design for man and woman because he doesn't want marriage. He doesn't want a nuclear family because it is the picture of Christ in the church. That's how he got to the rainbow community with the sexual fluidity. And that's how he got to the T community with the gender confusion. And that's why he loves divorce. That's why he loves adultery and fornication and, and children being separated from their parents and all of these things, because by attacking the nuclear family, he has attacked God. God from the beginning in Genesis created man and woman to become one flesh because we see in Ephesians that marriage is the perfect picture of Christ and the church indeed. And that's why the devil wants to steal, kill, and destroy it from all of creation, from all of creation. It is his number one goal. Ephesians 5, 22 through 27. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or, or any such thing that she might be holy and without blemish. So wonderful. That is what marriage is. That is why the devil wants to destroy it because it is the representation of Christ in the church. That is why we have these demonic deceptions of things such as the twin flame gospel, because the devil wants to steal, kill, and destroy what God has created to become one flesh in a holy covenant of biblical marriage that represents Christ and the church demonstrated in the physical here on earth. Whew. All right. Well, I pray that anyone watching this that is still stuck in new age, that is still stuck in the twin flame lie, I pray that you would have a revelation of the love that Jesus Christ does indeed have for you. In fact, let's say a prayer. I'm going to say a prayer for everyone in the chat, everyone watching on the replay. Um, please stick around. Do not get off the stream right now. I want to see that <laughs> those viewers stay the same. Stay on the stream. Stay for the prayer. Receive the prayer. Okay. And hang around through the end of this. We're going to hang out in the chat for maybe another 15 minutes before I got to go to Walmart for some last minute Thanksgiving things. So let's say this prayer. Father God, I just lift everyone in this chat to you right now. Everyone that is watching in real time and listening or watching on the replay, Lord, you know them all by name. You knit them together in the mother's womb. And so I just thank you for their lives, Lord. I thank you for the ability to be or the privilege to be your vessel that you would use me to hopefully minister truth to them, to just usher them out of any darkness that they may be living in right now, whether it's the lie of the twin flame doctrine or in any sort of sin of fornication or adultery or sexual immorality or the new age, whatever it is, Lord, you know their heart, you know their lives, you know everything about them, Father. Whatever that is, I pray that you would just use the words spoken in this stream to just 
shine a light, shine your light of your son, Jesus Christ, onto all that darkness and that you would convict them to repentance, that you would give them a revelation of the love that you have for them, Lord, that what they are searching for with this lie of the twin flame gospel, that they can only be found by the love of your son that was displayed for us on the cross. There's nothing more that can be done. There's nothing more that can be done to show us how loved we are because you already did it by sending your son. And so we thank you for that, Father. We just come together and we thank you for that. Those of us that know you, that are your children, that are that have received your spirit of adoption, we thank you, Lord. And for all those that are still under that spirit of disobedience, Father, we just all come together as your children. We pray that you would leave the 99 to go after them so that they may have the same spirit of adoption and that they would be born again too, Father God. We just pray and we, we just petition on behalf of them because we love them and we know that you love them so much more lord and i pray for anyone watching this that that has that has that has felt any shame or condemnation maybe listening to me talk about my twin flame testimony that they would know right now that there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus and that the that the that the father can set you free of all sexual bondages all sin all fornication he can make you an entirely new creation in Jesus' name. And if you know the Lord and you're still believing those lies, I want you to know that the word promises that the truth sets us free. And the truth is there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. The Lord sees you as spotless. He literally sees you as blameless. And it's because of the work that he has done that he sees you as righteous. And so I pray that that truth would just flood you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. And if you don't know that truth yet, that you would feel the conviction of that truth and that you would see your sin for what it is as an abomination to a perfectly holy God and that you would drop to your knees in repentance and ask him to forgive you, thanking him that he already has in Jesus name. And father, I just pray for everyone in this chat right now that if there is any lingering beliefs of this new age doctrine of the, of these soul ties, Lord, I pray that I just break that off of all of them right now in the mighty name of Jesus, by the authority of the Holy spirit that you have given to your believers, Lord, I break that from them right now in the mighty name of Jesus, that you would show them right now, if there's anything that they need to get rid of in their house, Father, if there's any any music they need to stop listening to that's keeping a door open, if there's anything they need to stop watching that's keeping a door open, Father, I pray that you would reveal that to them right now in Jesus' name, that you would give them those eyes to see and that by your spirit, they would be led to obey whatever it is you're instructing them to do right now, Father. And Lord, I just pray over your people. I pray protection. I pray, I pray blessing over everyone that is listening or watching. And I pray that we would all, of course, if you're watching in real time, you know, <laughs> this won't be applicable to you if you're listening on the replay, but I pray over everyone in real time that you would just have a blessed Thanksgiving, that you would share the gospel with your family. Remember the thing you are most thankful for tomorrow, and that is your salvation before the Lord Jesus Christ, and that you would disrupt the family dinner with the truth of the gospel no matter how uncomfortable it makes everyone feel that you would sit around that table and that you would tell your family the good news in Jesus name. I pray that boldness and that confidence over you right now, knowing that it's not of your own strength, but it's because his grace is sufficient in your weakness. And the spirit is always willing. So father, I thank you. We love you. We praise you in Jesus name. Amen. All right, let's hang out in the chat for a little bit. <sighs> um, if you're listening right now, this is the part where I cut off the, the segment and you have to go on YouTube to listen to the chat. So go there. Um, please consider if you haven't already partnering with the heaven and healing ministry would really mean so much to me. I give all my content for free. I'm always going to do all my content for free. Um, but if the Lord has really put it on your heart, if you were fed tonight, please don't just dine and dash, but partner with the ministry monthly. I have links to do that in the chat that's in the pinned comment and also going to be in the replay description in the episode description itself um so just thank you pray on it whatever the lord puts on your heart and please consider praying for me as well consider praying for the ministry praying protection over me my husband my daughter who is in my womb doing two months um yeah so thanks y'all 
It would mean a lot to me if you could consider partnering with me financially. Ooh. Okay. That was fun. Let's bring up the chat. Hold on. I'm also going to put on your screen um, a QR code. I have to... I have to go here. So that QR code is, um, that, it, that, where, <laughs> this, this guy, um, donor box is the most, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, I'd prefer you use donor box, but whatever way is easiest for you is easiest for me. So thank you in advance. Uh, do you have any questions for me? Anyone? Anyone have any questions? Would you like to see the cats? I also have a special guest. Keep the door open. Kittens! <laughs> it's me. Hello. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <sighs> Where am I going to sit? That's a great question. <laughs> we didn't think this through. I'll get a check. Kitty. Come. Um, yeah. Kittens. Kittens. <sighs> Special guest, please. Is this going to work? Go over here. Wait. You got your chat. What the mic's here? Hold on. I have to go here. Look, this is space because you've got that in this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting on a coffee table, so I'm gonna be super tall. Mm. That's not great. That's okay. Just lean forward. <laughs> We're doing the best we can with what we have. <laughs> Hi, everybody. God bless you. Uh, Jesus loves you. Hi, Angela. I was with this guy who was so toxic, but we had exact matching zodiac signs. Was he on assignment from the enemy? Yes. Watch this replay. Yes. 100%. Hmm. Uh, so someone said, it's Nayla. Wow. Wow. <laughs> God bless you all. So nice to see you. Um, I've just been in the chat with you all, and now I've appeared on the screen. Come here. How do we do it? Come here, please. <laughs> Jesus is the lover of your soul. Oh, we just need Ruby now. This would be a lovely family picture. Ruby. What is your guy's skincare routine? The Holy Spirit. Jesus. <laughs> like literally. <laughs> no, really. We're not just being modest. I don't use anything except water and Jesus on my skin. Would anyone... Do you want to say a prayer for skin? Sure. <laughs> if anyone... I actually get this a lot. If anyone wants a prayer real quick for, for skin... Nayla's going to say one. Awesome. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the living water that we need in our souls and in our bodies. Thank you that you have created our bodies to be temples for your Holy Spirit and that we can drink poison and not be harmed because we are under your protection. We're under your blood, Jesus, and that through you there is life and life abundantly and that we can be well when we know the lover of our souls, the one who made our bodies, the one who created every cell in our bodies. So I just pray right now, Lord, for complete alignment of every cell in the body of every person listening to this prayer, everyone under the sound of my voice. I speak to your bodies, to your skin, to your blood flow, to every cell in your body, and I command them to come into alignment right now with the blood of Jesus Christ. Be healed, be made whole, be restored and function as you were designed to function by God right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that when we glow with your Holy Spirit, our skin also glows. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for health and for freedom in you. Amen. Amen. Okay. Mm. Now you got to come to our DMs with um, skin healing testimonies. <laughs> it's funny because in New Age, we both had the demonic glow. So I use, people used to say that I was glowing when I was a yoga teacher. And I did have like this kind of demonic glow that was very appealing, this yogi glow, you know, there's, there's this thing, the yogi glow. 
But um, when I got saved, that went away because it was kind of like this mesmerizing, sensual, um, yeah, very magnetic glow that I had, but it was demonic. And um, yeah, when I got saved, that went away and I, I felt like kind of plain. <laughs> <laughs> but now everyone comes up to me saying like, oh, you're glowing. What's your secret? And I'm like, Jesus, because it's, it's like a natural glow that just comes from being God's child. And being from walking in the spirit, the spirit shines out of you. Right. And being restored to purity, right? Because we've been restored to our spiritual purity as children of God. So we we get to be babies again in the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> and also, you know, not wearing any makeup helps. I don't I don't wear makeup. She doesn't wear makeup. And uh yeah, praise God. So questions. That was amazing, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, did you see me? I'm like, preach. The Holy Spirit just took over Angela's mouth. Thank Answered you, my Jesus. prayers. Answered my prayers. Yeah, we prayed for that because we really wanted him to speak to you guys through Angela and just. Um... Oh, you're using new age terms in the prayer. <laughs> you use new age terms in the prayer. Y'all, listen, it takes like, a sp I, un I don't mean to say that disrespectfully <laughs> because I want to just speak to that for a moment. It's funny though. When I first came to Christ, I had that same mindset when I would hear people pray the way Nayla did. You got to remember something. What did I just say this whole live stream? Satan counterfeits everything. Mm -hmm. He counter, he's the one that took God's language. He mm -hmm. took God's language for his kingdom. The kingdom of light did not steal from the kingdom of darkness. Okay. And so when you hear someone just pray in authority of the Holy Spirit that the Bible promises mm -hmm. is given to Jesus's disciples, to those who are born again it's simply praying in the spirit like the bible tells us to mm -hmm. ceaselessly yeah it's praying in in faith Maybe, in faith i think that's what can be uh misconstrued as new age if you're still in the new age or if you've just come out of the new age because in in new age we speak about like manifesting our desires and taking authority over our lives as our own gods but in the Bible, God has certain promises for us, for wellness, for provision, um, and for new life. And so when we pray in authority as his kids, as his children, we are simply um, agreeing with, God, with what God has said. So we're just thanking God for his promises and coming into agreement with what he has promised us. We're not trying to manifest our own right. healthy skin, for example, with that prayer. Like you can't manifest your own healthy skin, but God has promised health. And God has promised provision and protection for his children. So we can thank him for that. He's promised that he wants to use our bodies as temples for his Holy Spirit once we're born again. So we can we can claim and proclaim that by faith because we believe who God is and what he says. Amen. And that's not word of faith either. That's just faith. The it's Bible faith. talks <laughs> the Bible talks so just much about faith. our faith and walking in faith. Hallelujah. And so I just pray for the um I just pray for the spiritual like maturity for over over anyone that that kind of feels uncomfortable by that. Um, and I don't mean that disrespectfully because it's something I had to be convicted on, and it's something I had to be sanctified through as well. Just having that spiritual maturity to recognize that I was giving way too much power to New Age and not and having way too much faith in that than I was in actually what the word says. Yeah, it's really so. it's really sad because. Like Angela said, the devil has stolen everything that God made and then put, tried to pervert it because he can't create anything of his own. So it's like rather than thinking that Christians are borrowing from New Age if they speak in a way that we're familiar with from New Age, we should assume, like Angela said, that every counterfeit has an original. So everything the devil comes up with is a perversion of what God has already made. So we, as Christians, we just walk in the original, authentic creation of God rather than the counterfeit like we did in New Age. Amen. Um, yeah, well, me and Nayla, some people were asking because they don't know you. This is not my friend that, pay, that prayed for me for 20 years. Um, Nayla and I were first introduced just by the work of God on Instagram when she was on the other side of the world, and now she's in the States. And so... This is our second time getting to spend one-on-one um, -on -one fellowship together. She was here over the summer as well. I do have a podcast with her already. Actually, I have two. Um, one of the very first episodes I ever recorded for Heaven and Healing, like back in 2022, like March or something of 2022, was with Nayla. 
And so that's on there. It's called The God-Shaped Hole. She shares her testimony. But an even better episode is when we are much more, <laughs> much further along on our faith walk. Mm. We were both delivered and san have been sanctified since that episode. So I think it's definitely worth listening to. It's called Maintaining Deliverance and Rejecting Lukewarm Christianity. Mm. Very triggering episode for many people. And we also talked about like what we just touched on just mm -hmm. now in that episode, like having faith in God's word and how to like renew your mind by proclaiming his promises and believing what he says but yeah very triggering mm. it it's very it's it's something that grieves me a lot and i know grieves you too that there's so much pushback when you talk about just believing jesus believing god's word like taking his word as as fact and standing on it by faith it's it really triggers uh, people who are currently struggling against a religious spirit or unbelief and they actually need to repent for unbelief but um, rather than do that, they tend to get frustrated that we're agreeing with God's word. But we're not going to stop agreeing with God's word because some people don't like it because we choose to believe Jesus. Yeah, amen. Well, we will likely uh, maybe next week do a live stream together. It's a long story. My um, The other place where I, the other room that I have all my, that you guys have seen before, like the in-person studio setup. Mm -hmm waiting for a computer it's on back order if honestly it's just like so silly but if y'all could pray for the computer it's on back order because they're waiting for the motherboard part i ordered it literally october 24th and it's not even built yet mm -hmm. so we're waiting on that to come in so that i can do this in there um so that being said if we do live stream next week it will be this very informal we're just going to be sitting like we are now <laughs> Um, Which I quite like. <laughs> you hate it. <laughs> I don't like it only because we spend so much time, energy, money on that room, yeah. setting that up it's nice that way. That and my husband has worked so hard on the camera angles in there and making everything like mm. whatever. But yeah, we'll see. We'll just, just, yeah. Um, words about things. What, what should well, we talk about anything now? Anything to do with twin flames. I want an opinion on tattoos. It was just a, such an amazing live stream. I feel like God really uh, spoke through you to cover everything that matters about Twin Flames. So I really pray people share this with um, new age friends and family and people who subscribe to Twin Flame. I, I completely subscribed to the Twin Flame um, doctrine when I was in New Age and I had a Twin Flame relationship um, and I really believed that... Um, everything that Angela explained about twin flames, like I believed that that was happening for me. And that relationship um, was so abusive and toxic and the twin flame paradigm that I subscribed to gaslit, like helped me to gaslight myself into believing that like a really abusive, toxic relationship was actually just me doing shadow work and spiritually ascending. And that I had to suffer in that relationship in order to spiritually ascend. So it's just like, another way that the devil tricks us into self-harming and self-destruction um, in the new age uh, under the guise of healing but it's not there's no healing outside of jesus so yeah it's just i think a lot of new ages have a twin flame testimony i have one and you shared yours which was just amazing to hear i know that really touched people because most most new ages have a twin flame experience yeah. i would say Someone said our twin flames the same as soulmates. I didn't address that in the stream, but mm. um, by definition, no. Like the they all say that the twin flame is like the other um, the other half of your soul, and your soulmate would be considered like a companion of your soul. Mm -hmm. But I think both are unbiblical. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, now because I I believe in a soul tie, mm -hmm. but I I don't believe that God has given us soul mates mm. but i believe we form soul ties through um but he has made an adam or an eve for you right that um like with you he wanted you to be married to to mike which is why he gave you that prophetic vision right and that feeling about um having a baby because you would have a baby with mike and that was god's will and that was always going to happen. Like that was written in he eternity. Gives us, he gives us our God will mate, not our, our God will mate, not our soul mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any other questions about 
um, soul ties that maybe came up during the live. I, I think I saw some, but I can't remember now. If you're still on and you still have a question that wasn't answered, then post it now and we can we can address it. Hmm. Yeah, God. Someone said simply God's plan. Yes, God's plan. That's much much easier. Yes, God's plan. <laughs> I think we can have a soulmate, but they aren't our God nor our Savior. I mean, if you are in a biblical God honoring Christ centered marriage and you choose to call your spouse your soulmate, I don't think that's a problem if that's your, yeah. that's your personal conviction. Yeah, and it's like it's like the scripture I read. Honestly, I would rather just be like, what does it say? Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Hmm. I think that just sounds more romantic anyway than saying soulmate. Yeah. I still talk to my ex as that a soul tie. Did you fornicate? <laughs> And, and like what's how, the context yeah. of talk? <laughs> mm -hmm. Are you st are you talking to them to minister Jesus to them? Then absolutely <laughs> keep doing it. That's awesome. What is the special dish y'all are making tomorrow? Oh. So this is Nayla's first ever... Um... America Thanksgiving. <laughs> I'm so excited. And it's also my first time making a turkey. So That's... And my first time making a turkey. We're going to pray through it together. <laughs> Lord, help us. Lord, help us. <laughs> So we have the turkey, we have mac and cheese, green bean casserole, cranberry Pe sauce. Uh, no, how do I say it? Pecan. Pecan. Pecan pie. <laughs> or pecan pie. Pe pecan. <laughs> pecan. Pecan. Pe it's, it's actually pecan in I've British heard, English. I hear it so many different ways. Pe um, pecan. Wait, what, I, I lost our... So mac and cheese, cranberry sauce, stuffing, obviously. We have roasted potatoes and carrots. And then green bean casserole. And then dinner rolls. And then pecan pie. Pecan. Nice. Pecan. Pecan pie. With ice cream. Well, Did maybe I say that we already? can ask people what what do you want us to talk about in our next live stream together? If anyone has any If I can't keep someone off my mind in the past, do I have a soul tie I need deliverance from? That's um that's a that's that's a that's a flag, yeah. That you could need mm -hmm. that. You could also just need to renew your mind in the word. Amen. So. But yeah, definitely that a characteristic that I really experienced in my soul tie twin flame experience during New Age was that like, like Angela described that pull where you feel like this person is someone you can't live without. Um someone that you're really physically attracted to and magnetized to in kind of a lustful, addictive, unhealthy way. I mean, my, this, the soul tie experience, I had the twin flame experience. I had my demons and their, de I now know as a Christian that it was our demons that were attracted to each other, but like his demons knew things about me that I never spoke that, that he could never know except by the power of, demons by the our spirits just the unclean spirits we had were just having a field day like together just um so sometimes like in new age that's in, you interpret that as your as your soulmate or your twin flame because it's like how they know me you know they know me so deeply right. but um if you're having a fornication relationship with someone then everything they know about you is by the power of demons like it's not coming through god because god doesn't um bless or speak through fornication he only blesses marriage and sex within the covenant of marriage so like all that kind of unspoken telepathic energetic oneness false oneness that you experience when you're when you're in fornication is actually demonic it's like counterfeit connection um and it always leaves you hungry for more feeling empty feeling insecure Mm -hmm. whereas when you're in a in a god-centered covenant marriage like you were saying you you feel so like blessed and safe that your body belongs to your husband that god mm -hmm. blesses your union and also i wanted to say like you know when people say in the comments oh your body belongs to your husband the word also says that your husband's body belongs to you it's not <laughs> it's not a sexist thing it's not only the woman it's the man and the woman 
just wanted to yep amen include that Someone said we should do an episode on finding a husband. And the same person has been leaving multiple inquiries about how do you find a husband? How do you find a husband? As Nayla was talking, I felt just like really led to, uh, I don't know if this is like a word for you. You're making an idol out of relationships. Mm -hmm. Um, And the Lord has this really fun way of when you surrender something to him is like really when he kind of provides something to you Mm -hmm. so if you're really if you've really made an idol of this like i need a i I want a husband i want a husband i want a husband it's too late for me all these things you need to start renewing your mind in the word of god about his promises for you and come into agreement with the promises because right now it sounds like your your pursuit of finding a husband is like is from a place of fear where it's like it's too late or you're worried you'll die alone or you're worried you'll never have these things that we're talking about in a biblical covenant whereas if you're pursuing a a husband actually less of a pursuit for the husband himself but you're just pursuing jesus that jesus just brings you a husband Mm. and it's more of a prayer of of faith and thanksgiving than it is of plea it makes a huge difference when you when you pray the way he tells us to in supplication and thanksgiving rather than begging and pleading with him. Mm-hmm. Um, and also Jesus is your husband. That's very true. So you actually already have one. Um, and like, yeah, like Angela said, when you're really content with the lover of your soul, your husband, Jesus Christ, then, you know, if it's his will, he's going to bring you a husband. But yeah, you can't make an idol of it. And that's easier said than done. We've all gone through that. Um, like putting too much of our fulfillment there. But as Angela was saying in the live stream, like no other human being will ever fulfill you. No other human being, whether it's a husband in a biblical context or a twin flame can fulfill you. Only Jesus. And that too, both Jesus and Paul say it's okay to be single. It's okay to be single, but it's also okay to burn with passion and then identify I need to marry. And so to, to, to hello hi. say hi to the chat hi chat <laughs> yeah. yeah hi Nayla. hi michael everyone say hi michael <laughs> they're not very responsive the whole internet just screamed hi michael at their laptops <laughs> how's your night going i closed early so i'm almost done Yay! Wow. Praise God! Thank you, Jesus. So what an answered prayer. Yeah, we were we were slow the last like hour and a half or so, so I was just like, all right, exactly. Hi, Michael. <laughs> it says hi, Michael, in the chat. Yo, brother, Michael. Uh, Michael. <laughs> hey, Mike. <laughs> Everyone's excited. Aw, <laughs> we miss you, Mike. Miss okay. you. Okay. Well, hopefully, hopefully, I'm done soon. Okay, we'll see you soon. We we're gonna get off the chat because we still have to go to Walmart to get those things. So we have to go to Walmart now. Jesus Wait, is my husband. Forget? Thank you, Lord. That list that Amen. you sent me, or that you wrote for oh, me. Oh wow, you haven't gone yet. Nope. Okay, we're going now. I love you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> we don't need luck. We have Jesus. Yeah. Amen. I love you. Text <laughs> him. Yeah. He, he's see this is like my husband leaves me to things he's like you didn't go to the store yet like no we're waiting a half hour before they close i just want to finish that point because on the yeah other, i'm sorry on, on the other side of like it's okay to be single and you should just embrace that is the reality that if you don't have the gift of celibacy then it might not be your calling to be single mm. and god has a marriage for you but he wants you to surrender your desires to him trust him seek first the kingdom and then he will bring that person in in the right time if you are impatient or making an idol out of marriage then god will actually delay that blessing in order to help you to have the right heart posture because ultimately god is in the process of sanctifying our hearts circumcising our hearts and preparing us to literally look like jesus when we arrive at heaven's gates and we are a work that he's finished so if you're if he can see he can see your heart right god sees your heart if he can see you have a marriage as an idol in your heart then in his goodness and love and grace he'll he'll actually hold that back from you whilst wow. you you get into the right position to receive that blessing which is to 
seek Jesus first, know that Jesus is your husband, that he's enough, and to just worship and adore him and thank him wow. that in his perfect timing he's going to bring you a husband so thanking him in advance and when i sh when i shifted to that heart posture then i no longer idolized marriage mm. so i think that's really important it's okay to burn with passion and say to the lord i need to marry i am i, I can feel that i'm i'm made to marry and that i'm not able to live a single life the way that paul did but i trust you for the timing god and i'm going to wait because your timing is perfect mm. and then not try and like control things and make it happen but truly truly trust in the lord and he'll bring it when it's his timing that was good that was a good word amen all right y'all we do have to go though because we love you um walmart closes in a half hour I love when people say hi to Sayla too. Oh, thank you. Sayla, she's going to be here soon. She's going to be in my arms. I can't wait to hug her. <laughs> <laughs> I want to just say again that um, Jesus is the lover of your soul. He's your husband. There's no one more romantic than God. So if you're someone who watched this because you long for romantic love, Jesus is the only one who's ever going to give you what you're looking for. So Stop seeking your twin flames, stop seeking your soulmate and seek Jesus with everything you've got in your heart. And then he will reward you with the kind of relationship that would most glorify him and most bless you as he's done for Angela. Amen. 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 All right. And y'all again, please consider, um, please just pray about it, partnering with the ministry financially. Um, yeah. Yeah. We, everything we do is for the Lord and donation based. So we know that when it's God's timing, he puts generosity in people's hearts to bless us. And we're just so grateful. Amen. Have a wonderful night, y'all. Please read your Bibles. We love you. <laughs> Jesus loves you. <laughs>